So first, let's take a look at minimum path sum. So we're given a m times n grid filled with non-negative values, so positive, all positive values, including zero. Find a path from top left to bottom right, which minimize the sum of all numbers along its path. So you can only move either down or right at any point in time. So we're starting from the top left and we're trying to go to the bottom right. So we want to find the minimum sum of all numbers along its path. And we can only go down or right. We cannot go down right. So if I were here, I cannot go here, right? I can only go here and then here, or here and then here, right? So I cannot go just directly here, right? So you can see here we have given a 2D array. And uh, in this case, the output is seven because the minimum path sum to reach the bottom right is gonna be this path right here, right? So it's gonna be one, three, one, 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 which give us a sum of seven, right? Seven. So in this case, if we were to choose other path, that will give us a larger path sum. So we want to find the minimum, right? So in this case, um, we're going to just return the minimum path sum. And uh, you can see here, we also have another example where we have just one, two, three, four, five, six, right? If I were to draw this, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. If I want to go here, the minimum, right? If I were to start from here, then I have two decisions. Either I can go this way or I can go this way, right? So if I go this way, um, I going to have one plus two, which is total of three. If I go here, I have uh, three plus three, which is gonna be six, right? So six, if I go down here, that's gonna be a total sum of 12. And if I choose a different path, in this case, one plus four is five. And then if I go here, one plus uh, four, five plus five, in this case, is gonna be 10. And five, uh, plus six in this case is going to be 16, right? So in this case, you can see if I go to another path, I have a larger sum. But if I go here, right, if I go like one plus two plus five, that's uh, that's eight. Eight plus six, that's 14. So that's also not going to work. So you can see here, we cannot go up. We cannot go left. We can only go down and right. So in this case, this will give us a result of 12, right, which is our minimum path sum. So to solve this problem, we know that for each and every single step, we have two decisions. Either we can go um, this way or we can go this way. So if that's the case, then what we can do is for each decision, we can make two decisions, right? Because, because we have to traverse all those paths to see if it's good, right? Because we can't just do it in a greedy way where we take, okay, this is the smallest element, then we go this way. But then we realize that those two values are all bigger than those two values, right? So this will not give us the accurate results. So what we had to do is we had to go traverse all two paths. Because we have two options, we had to go through those two options. And, figure, and when it backtrack coming back to the current stack level, we will determine who has the smallest path sum. And then we're going to return the smallest path sum uh, from those two options that we chose, right, that we traverse plus the current element's value, right? Let me show you an example. So in this case, we're starting from here and we are going here, right? So we have one plus three, which is gonna be four, right? And then we're gonna keep going down we until we find, right? For each uh, element, we have two decision, right? We can go here, right? And once we reach to the bottom right, we know this is the element then what we can do is we can just return back, right? When we backtrack, we can just return back the current element's value, right? Which, which is gonna be one. And once we get here, uh, we're basically just going to return the smallest element in this case, because here we're going out of bound. So what we can do is we can just return a maximum value so that if this is the maximum value, right? When it returns back, if this is out of bound, we can just return a maximum value. Maximum value compared to one, one is smaller than maximum value, then we're just going to take the minimum value, which is one, which reached down to the bottom right, one plus one, which is gonna be two. So at this position, 
the minimum path sum to reach the bottom right is going to be two, right? So one and two, right? And then same thing here. So the minimum path sum here is two. And then we know that if we were to choose here, right, this will give us a max because we're going out of bound. So, or we can go below, right, which give us a, uh, a minimum path sum of two. So two is smaller than max. So here, the minimum path sum to reach the bottom right is gonna be two plus the current element's value, which is gonna be three, right? And then same thing here, I can choose here, I can go here. And if I go here, uh, five, right, plus, in this case, one is six, six plus one is seven. So this will give us a minimum path sum of seven, or we can choose this way, but this will give us eight, right? So in this case, seven, compare three, seven is bigger than three. So we're gonna choose, we're gonna have the minimum path sum, which is gonna be three. So we're gonna backtrack, we're gonna take the minimum path sum between those two options, which is three. Three plus three, which is the current element's value, is gonna be six. So the current minimum path sum for this position right here, which to the bottom right, is gonna be six, okay? So we're gonna return six and backtrack to this root stack level. And then once we have one, we're going to compare, either we should go down or we should go right. So we know that if we go here, it's gonna be something bigger like one plus four, which is five, five plus two, which is gonna be um, uh, uh, seven, seven plus one, which is gonna be eight. So it is either eight, right? Or it's um, going to be six. So six is smaller, so we're gonna take six plus one, which is gonna be seven. So in this case, the minimum, right? So the minimum, uh, minimum path sum to get to the bottom right is gonna be seven for this position, right? So now we know how to do this recursively, right? For the top-down approach. Basically, the goal is we're going to make those two decisions, right? And that's gonna give us a big uh, time complexity of big O of um, two to the power of n, which is gonna be exponential, or I should say two to the power of um, m times n, right? Because this is the size of the 2D array, or all the elements that we have in 2D array. So in this case, we're, going, we're getting a exponential time complexity. So what we can do is we can use memoization to bring time complexity down to big O of m times n by using the same uh, approach that we just talked about, right? We're going to have each subproblem for each subproblem, we're going to uh, have two decisions. And once, if we visit that elements before, we can, can cache it in our uh, 2D array. And then if we visit that element before, we can just return that pre-computed value. If we didn't visit it, we can compute it and save it onto a 2D array. So this will give us a time complexity and space complexity of big O of M times N. So let's take a look at that in our code. So here you can see we have our code, and uh, basically we're uh, have a we're taking a 2D array, 2D integer array, and then we're making those variables in a global variable. Then we're going to have a cache 2D array that has a size that has a m m number of row and n number of columns. Then we're going to call this helper method, which starts at zero and uh, zero zero. Right, we are starting for the first element in the 2D array. So let's say this is our this is our grid, right? So we're starting from here. So we're going to basically check to see if the current position is out of bound, right? If Because we can only go uh, right and left, so we check to see if the current row is out of bound or if the current column is out of bound, right? So if it is, then we can just return the maximum value, okay? Because once we uh, backtrack to the to the position, to the root uh, recursion stack, we're gonna compare to see if the value, uh, if whoever has the smallest value, right? If both of them are large values, like integer dot max value, then this is not gonna work, right? Because we need to have a bottom right in our grid. So at the end, we're just going to return the smallest value. Right, so if we found the bottom right, in this case, if we would find about bottom right, then we can just return the current elements value in our grid. So if we found our bottom right, we can just return it, um, and then we 
also check to see if we pre-computed this value before. If we pre-computed this value before, we can just return that pre-computed value. And this is basically our core concept, right? Basically, we have to uh, traverse both paths, do a DFS for both paths. If we go to the right, then the next, uh, then we have to traverse the right path, right? If we traverse, and then we also have to get the minimum path sum if we go down, uh, go down path, right? If we traverse downwards. Um, and then in this case, at the end, we're going to get a minimum value, either the right minimum sum path, uh, path sum, or the down minimum uh, sum path, and plus the current elements value uh, will give us the minimum path sum for the current position. And at the end, we're just gonna return that to our parent recurs uh, recursion stack. And at the end, we're just gonna continuously do that until we re uh, found our minimum path sum, and that we're just gonna return that in our uh, main function, right? So in this case, at the end, this will give us a time complexity of m times n, and so does the space complexity. So how can we optimize this? So one way we can optimize this is we can use a uh, two um, a bottom up approach, right? Basically, this will still give us a time complexity of m times n, but that's gonna be a good start to talk about how we can be able to optimize this. So this, to start, we have m and we we also have n, and we have a 2D cache array, and then we're for the first element, we're basically going to save the first element in the grid, right? So if I have our uh, our grid like this, the first element uh, is gonna be the same as the cache first element, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna define the first row. And basically the idea for the bottom of approach is that let's say we have um, like one, three, one. Um, basically, let's say if we have one, three, one, one, five, one, four, two, one, right? Basically the idea is that uh, the minimum path sum Right, because we know that there is going to be a bottom right element in the 2D array. So we just want to know the minimum path sum from here to here, right? Or the, the minimum path sum or the, the, the path that gets it from here to here is going to be the sum of those two elements, right? So that will give us the previous elements or the previous path sum, which is one plus the current elements value, which will give us a two. So if I have a 2D array, right? So in this case, I have one, and the next element is gonna be two because one plus one, right? The sum of this is gonna be two. And then in this case, same thing for this element as well. It's gonna be three plus the previous element, right? Which is gonna be four, right? So four. So that's gonna give us the minimum path sum from here to here, right? And then what we're gonna do is for here, the minimum path to from here to get to here is gonna be the total sum of those entire values. But we already computed the minimum path sum from here to here. So we can use that to compute this element's value. So it's gonna be four plus one, which is gonna be five. And then so does this element right here. The minimum is gonna be either two or four, right? It seems like this has a shorter path, so two plus the current element's value, which is seven. And then so does this element right here. So the minimum path from the, the here all the way to here is gonna be five, right? Five plus one, which is six. So in this case, the smallest element between those two is gonna be five, five plus one, which is the current element's value, which is gonna be six. And, uh, and then at the end, we're going to have uh, two plus four, right? Which is gonna give us six, six, so the smallest element between those two, which is gonna be six, six plus the current element's value, which is gonna be eight. And for this element right here, the smallest between those two is gonna be six, six plus the current element's value, which is gonna be seven. So at the end, the answer is uh, resides at the last element in the 2D array. So this will give us the minimum path sum, right? By comparing the top and the left, right? We're going the reverse way to solve the problem. We're starting from the top um, and working our way down, 
in our grid to figure out the, 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 the minimum path sum to get to this position, right? So this is how we do, do it here, right? We basically compute the first row because we know that for the first row, it's kind of like the, the current uh, minimum path sum is based on the previous column's value. So that's what we did here, plus the current element's value in our grid. And then this will give us the minimum path sum for the current position in our cache. And then we're going to build the remaining rows, right? We're gonna basically build the cache remaining rows. And then we're starting from the second row, right? We're starting from the second row because we compute the first row. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use the data that we computed in the first row to build our second row. Okay, so in this case, for the first element, it's gonna be the current element's value plus the previous row's first column's value to compute the first element, right? So we need the first element to be able to compute the remaining elements. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to compare. We're gonna get our top element, right? Top computer value, as well as the left computer value. Once we get those two, we're gonna find the minimum value between those two plus the current element's value. And this will be the minimum path for the current element's value, right? For the minimum path sum from the top left to the current position in the 2D array. Once we save that in our cache, we're gonna continue to do that until we get to a point where we get, uh, where we have cache at M minus one, right? We get to the very end last element, and then we're just gonna return the minimum path sum for the last element, right? So just like what we did here, that's our answer, right? That's our minimum path sum to get to the bottom right. Okay, so this will give us a time complexity as well as space complexity of big O of M times N. But what we can do to optimize this is because we know that to compute the current row, we need the previous row's result. So if that's the case, then we need to uh, save or pre-compute or uh, we need two 2D array or we need a two array. Uh, one array basically um, um, saves the previous row's data or saves the previous row cache data. And then the current row basically uses the previous row's data to compute the current row's data. And at the end, we're just going to have a, uh, we're just gonna improve the time complexity down to big O of N or the space complexity down to big O of N because we just need two arrays to traverse down the, the, the entire 2D array, right? Because all we need is the previous row's data to compute the current row's data. And at the end, we just need two arrays, the current, the current row array and the previous row array. And at the end, we're going to get our, um, our value. And the, the, the value that we need is gonna be the last element in the array.